Um, so I suppose why social research? Um, so I've decided I'm going to go way, way back to my leaving search. Um, so when I was in school, I was absolutely fascinated by maths and science, and they were my best objects. Really, 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 really loved them, um, and genetics in particular. And so when I was doing my leaving cert, definitely insert screaming emoji here because I still have like flashbacks of it. I feel really sorry for people kind of coming into this time of year. Um, I was interested in doing the course in genetics in UCC. I'd heard about it, but then unfortunately it wasn't actually starting until the year after I finished my leaving cert. So I, had to, I suppose I had to make a decision. And so what was I going to do? So I was going to hang around for a year, which actually now I think would have been awesome. Um, but then I was the kind of person that kind of needed to move forward a small bit. Um, and so what was I going to do? I now look back at my CA, CAO application and just think it was a big muddled mess of something who, of someone who had no idea what she wanted to do or what she was going to do. So I did arts. Because arts is great when you don't know what the hell you want to do. Um, and then I was like, what am I going to do with an arts degree? So there was a lot of panic. I had to pick subjects. And I was like, oh, I could be a teacher. Teachers get paid. Um, and so I went and I had to pick my subjects. So I don't know if anyone has done arts or um, was to arts or are familiar with arts, but you pick four subjects at the start and you eventually drop two. So you're, it's a three-year program. First year is four and then um, they don't count to anything. And it's your second and your third year um, subjects that matter. And so I picked Irish, economics, geography, because I was like a big teacher. And then the fourth one was sociology, and that was like the curveball, because I couldn't decide, I really couldn't figure out what and what was I going to do. And it was a friend, of, a family friend who worked in disability support services here, who said, I have a feeling you like sociology. I think it's just something a little bit different. You know, you're a little bit curious. Maybe this would be a good fit for you. And so I went into sociology and then started geography and realized that geography wasn't just about rivers carving out paths. Um, that there was actually this thing called social geography as well. And so basically I kind of spent three years running around learning about theories and like Marx and Durkheim and um, I got like obsessed with Foucault and surveillance and prisons and all sorts of stuff. Um, and just loved it, loved the idea of space, loved the idea of behaviour, loved the idea of, you know, um, institutions and the impact of institutions. Um, and sort of how they influence how it is that we, I suppose, make our way through our daily lives. And so with that, with an arts degree, you actually have to do a lot of work, um, despite what many people think. And in my final year, I had to do two research dissertations. Uh, so two, four, two 10,000 word research dissertations as just, and I think it was only worth like 10 credits or something. So it was a bit manic. And actually one for geography and one for sociology. And I think the one in sociology was, oh God, I played, I played to my supervisor on that one and it was like looking at the differences between commerce and arts students and what they got from the university. And so what it was that the institution of UCC had become. So was it about getting people a job or was it about learning? So the arts, commerce. And social geography, I looked at um, the RNLI um, and so the lifeboats and looking how that organization works. So two very, very different pieces of work. But what I worked out during that process is that I had an interest in research. So that's where I suppose I was first introduced to research. And I was also first introduced to like, trying to put together a research question. So we had one module on, you know, I suppose, design. And that was not the best in terms of how they went about it. So you had to come up with a research question. And Gangs of New York was out at the time and I had just watched it. And I had to go in on Monday morning with my research proposal. So I decided that I, at like 19 or 20, was going to go in and um, yeah, was going to examine the experience of all Irish prisoners. Um, yeah, yeah, I learned quickly, very, very quickly. And I put that proposal forward for my 10,000 word dissertation. Uh, for sociology and was told, no, Sarah, no. And so I learned about design and questions. 
But through this, um, and in particular, I suppose, is where I kind of fostered, where I suppose my career really fostered, because I learned a lot about perspective and perception and how that changes. And one of my favourite quotes from a film, I remember as well, kind of thinking, like, oh, that makes sense. This is where it all started to make a little bit more sense to me, kind of a lot of, you know, I suppose, what I was being taught, and is that we all look out our own windows. So as we look at the world, we all see things differently. It all is based on what it is that we've learned. So we're all socialised. We just we, we don't you know come into this world um, and just be. You know, our, our culture, society, all impact on who we are and how we go about. How we're educated, if we're educated, or if we're not. If you're a lower, middle, higher class, you know, if you've got brothers or sisters, also makes a difference. Um, you know, so on where it is and what you've done will make an absolute massive difference on your perception and on your perspective and how you go forward. And the thing about it was then was like, oh God, what am I going to do? You know, I've got a sociology and geography arts degree. Um, like, what am I going to do for a job? So it's great, like, looking at perspectives and it's great about understanding what people think and, you know, kind of getting, you know, learning a lot about empathy, actually. Um, but I, what was I going to do? Um, so I figured out that I actually really wanted a job at some point. Um, and so I decided that research was actually kind of cool because it, it, it kept the curiosity in me. So I was able to go down the route of, you know, still maintaining, you know, curiosity in my life, but actually, you know, finding the skills and trying to hone in on those skills that will be important. Because actually, interesting enough, I was just at the research conference this morning and it was looking at, um, I suppose, research across the disciplines and out of all the researchers in, um, I suppose, across UCC, there's only 32 in arts and humanities. Um, but I decided, you know, so that's quite small, but I decided that methods were the way to go. So um, I went and I did a master's and I focused on a master's which just did methods pretty much primarily. Um, and I want to do qualitative methods, which is my real interest. Um, but I knew that I need qualitative methods, again, to get paid. There's a lot of I need to get paid in here, by the way. Um, <laughs> and at the time, I suppose, I, I would graduate around 2004, 2005. I get my years mixed up. Um, oh, 2005 from the Masters. Um, and at the time, qualitative methods weren't particularly popular in medicine. Um, they were considered soft, fluffy. Um, uh, many a derogatory word thrown at me um, about you know like what good were they? Do you know what like what what is the point? Um, and as I kind of later on in my career, kind of got a little bit more, I suppose, uh, well, I grew a backbone and kind of went anything decent quantitative came from a qualitative study generally. Um, but I so I thought using both and having an understanding of both was really, really important because I actually am quite pragmatic and I do think that you need both. I think it's important that, you know, we need to know the numbers, we need to know what's going on. But in order to really get in behind something, you need qualitative um, methods as well. Because the thing is, we're not part of, we're, we're not really honed in on the natural sciences. You can't dissect us. You can't open up people and figure out, you know, why it is that they did what they did, you know, um, and so that's why I liked the mix of both. And so I went in uh, to medicine and health. And the thing is, and I've been here since I suppose 2005, I took up my first post in epidemiology and public health and I worked with um, Birgit Greiner and um, Bernie Mullally um, at the time on the smoking ban. So the smoking ban had just been introduced. And so we we're looking at that. So it was a lot of quantitative stuff. Um, which wasn't and still isn't my strength. My strength is more qualitative, but I can make my way through um, quantitative analysis. Um, and so I thought it was really quite interesting. And I was like, all right, Jack Grant. And again, it was um, a research post, so, and it was something that I wanted to do. And it was the first real available post, and there wasn't too much around um, in the arts and humanities. Um, and so what I like about it is that as a sociologist, medicine and health really does appeal because if you, you, it enabled me to look at society, it enabled me to look at culture and also the actions and interactions of health professionals and how that impacts practice. And as a sociologist, I'm more a sociologist than I am a social geographer, um, that really, really appealed to me. 
and particularly in the last number of years, I've noticed there's a real move from paternalism in medicine. Like before, you used to do what your doctor told you to do, you know, and they had your best interests at heart, you know, and there was a lot of, you know, I suppose we could say a lot of cover ups and, and bits and pieces, but now we're looking at a real move towards patient autonomy. And I think that's what's really nice as a, as a sociologist is that I, I suppose I can take advantage of that and move and, and suggest topics that, you know, that I suppose wouldn't have been engaged with um, before. And so within that though, and as a sociologist, I suppose I've, I've been quite lucky. And again, we're talking about mobility this morning. I've been able to move across medicine and health and into different disciplines. So I suppose I started here in epidemiology working in um, the smoking ban. I moved into the National Suicide Research Foundation. I worked there um, on deliberate self-harm and then into the injury database. I've also worked with the dental school um, looking at um, removable partial dentures and hypodontia. Um, so stuff for children, stuff for adults. There's nothing like being in a, an interview when someone hands over their denture. You're like, no, I'm not a dentist. I don't need to see this. Um, and then I decided I couldn't really get much in terms of progression at that point. So the dental stuff was to get more money. Um, there were side projects um, because researcher, particularly at a junior level, you know, it, it's okay. Um, but so these were opportunities that I took. Um, and so then I was like, basically, I suppose I'd, I'd, I'd been on an RSO there was no real movement, there wasn't any sign of movement and uh, as someone said you have to go out to come back in. And so I took up a post in Limerick but it was a teaching post um, and so I taught for a full year and I taught research methods in Limerick in the Department of Psychology and uh, loved it and hated it in equal measure. Loved it because students are amazing. They're just so, so good and um, they just can come, kind of come out of nowhere and you get those little bright eyes that look at you up in a room and they get really, really excited and they remind you so much of what's good about research and, you know, what's good about learning these methods and they kind of half reminded me of myself, you know, getting really excited about, you know, interviewing every single Irish prisoner in Ireland ever um, and, you know, that, like, getting so enthusiastic about, you know, getting taken away. Um, but also it taught me that I'm really bad at paperwork and um, I'm a little bit too curious to sit down and kind of do the same methods over and over again. So I was teaching first and second years T-tests and I can tell you there's only so many T-tests that you can teach and they also got me teaching first year psychology students from four to six on Friday. Um, yeah, it wasn't good. They didn't realise that they had to do stats. They didn't like me. And so um, with that, I decided, no, nope, it's research for me. That's it. I would like to teach, but I would like to teach a little. Um, and I really, really, really want something that gives me that gleam in my eye that I could see in my students again. And so uh, if a colleague of mine that worked in epidemiology and public health here, Jennifer Latomsky, uh, gave me the heads up that there was something coming up in the National Perinatal Epidemiology Centre. And she said, I think it's for you, because there's scope there. And she said, I don't think you'd necessarily apply for it if you knew, because it was clinical audit. We needed someone for clinical audit. And she goes, but there's scope for you to, it's a new centre, it can expand. And I went, great. So we'll go for it. It'll get me out of teaching. I don't think, I only did one year of it. I don't know how people do it constantly more power to them because great teachers are amazing but I, I just wasn't one of them I don't think and oh yeah so I end up in the National Perinatal Epidemiology Centre um, what's particularly nice about that is that it, it does again it comes back to my background so it, it, it's in medicine it's in the department of obstetrics and gynecology and we look at adverse outcomes in mothers and babies and it's it, like my mother really really dislikes it because it, 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 it kind of kills conversations generally because it's morbidity and mortality is what we're, we're really interested in, but predominantly mortality so it's infant death it's stillbirth and miscarriage um, I think that's my my day-to-day -day life. Um, do a little bit on home births, which is interesting, uh, and some nice stuff, but it's mostly the bad stuff. Um, 
And as a sociologist, I, it's something I thrive in because there's so much in relation to miscarriage and stillbirth and neonatal death that has, um, you know, that society and culture and the actions and interactions of health professionals have had such an impact on. Um, so you look at things like, um, it, like we would say that stillbirth um, and perinatal death is one of the real silent public health issues. Um, and it is very much silent. Um, and you look at women and where women and reproductive health are in terms of, in, in terms of if you look at our government, if you look at religion. Um, and so it's something where I feel that I can maintain my identity as a social researcher and yet work very happily with medics. Um, and so I've kind of carved my way through that. But it hasn't been without a challenge. And working with a multidisciplinary team is great. It's absolutely fantastic. But it's really, really, really challenging. And what I found is that I spent the first while sitting down with a book. And I'll just focus on MPEC here now. Um, and I had to buy like an obstetrics textbook because I had no idea what they were talking about. I know terms that I like it used to sound like pasta dishes. So or whatever, it was just like, and I can tell you, I'll put you off your pasta. Um, and you know, it's a different language. How they speak, how they communicate, what they're interested in is very different to how I was taught and how I was trained and how I spoke and what I was interested in. And the thing is, I suppose that they, we worked out that we wanted the same outcome. We're looking for the same thing. We want to improve, you know, the care for mothers and babies. But what is important to them and what is important to me? So they're really interested in practice and clinical practice. I, on the other hand, was kind of going like, well, if you come in from this direction. And so you're working with pathologists, you're working with midwifery, you're working with obstetricians, um, and really um, difficult characters sometimes because like they're 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 A type personalities, you know, they're they're gunning through, you know, um, and so and then sometimes like a concept is stronger than a fact sometimes, you know, and sometimes what we're really familiar to us is more comfortable. And that's how you go forward. So if you're suggesting something, you know, that's new to them, um, you, sometimes you just really do get a wall. And so what I've really learned to do is communicate and figure out like what's important. So what's really important to me with this research project? What is it that I really need to make sure gets done and done right and come out of this? And is there one of those million, you know, kind of really cool projects that I'm thinking about, but which is the one that's going to be sold? So what can I sell to my supervisors? But also, what could I potentially sell to the HRB? Oh, someday, someday. The other challenge was writing. And um, writing is a challenge anyway. Hate it with passion. Um, and it's challenging for me because I went to an all-Irish school, actually. And so when I write, I write backwards. I still use the construction from Irish grammar. Um, so that really irritates everybody, um, me especially. And, um, but also when you come from a different discipline as well. So <clears throat> I have been told that my latest writing has been referred to as, you know, you're looking at as the Irish Times or the Daily Mirror. So if I talk to friends who are still in sociology, as far as they're concerned, anything that I write for in medicine health is the Daily Mirror because it's been shortened down, theory's been thrown out the door, medicine and health is only interested in references that are no more than 10 years old. And then it's just like, but where's theory? You know, there's stuff that's been done, you know, way back that applies. Now, again, if we look at Foucault, you know, or whatever, we look at those things, we look at surveillance, Goffman, you know, your, your player on the stage, you know, this is really, you know, really important stuff. But medicine and health do not want to see that, it's old. It's in, and if it's old, it's out the door. And I suppose it's trying to balance that. You know, however, medicine and health would say it the other way around as well. You know, we like our own disciplines. We like to think we're the best. Um, so that's also been really, really challenging, I suppose, is trying to figure out what to do with that. And again, I always came back to, you know, what is it that I wanted from my career? My career, I wanted to make change. And I suppose it's the bit that I'm happy to bend with which is, yeah, I could sit down and I still do. I still go back to my theory and I still go back and I still read it. You might necessarily see it as a citation, but it's there somewhere in my writing. Um, and if you want to talk, you know, like if I was at a conference, I can talk more to it. But it's not all bad, Dora River. So it is difficult and you can have fights. 
you know, and I do need sometimes fights with, you know, kind of a clinician about, you know, they don't understand that design is really important. Um, and they want to do analysis because it sounds cool as opposed to it being, you know, actually applicable. And that's one of the things, actually, if you do the masters in obstetrics and gynecology, you get loads of critical Wallace's just because it sounds better. Um, and you, like you have to fight that sometimes, going, no lads, no seriously, that's not the way it happens. Um, but it really isn't. The world is definitely yours and you can find your own little, I, I suppose, niche in it and get really, really comfortable in that. Um, and I don't think I'll leave maternal health for a while. Maybe because it's really applicable to me at the moment, given my age, you know, here we are and the fact that I'm a woman and I have friends who are having babies and, um, so it's it's something that I'm really interested in 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 seeing change in, um, and so it's something that I, I I really like and happily gets me up in the morning. And the suddenly the the getting paid bit has become a little less prominent than when I was doing stuff on dentures, you know. Maybe when I'm like sixty, I'll go back to dentures, you know. Um, seriously, let's push teeth. Um, and there's such opportunity. You can travel so much. Conferences are amazing. Extend them into holidays. Um, and you can go and you can visit. And that's one of the things that I feel I haven't done enough in terms of visiting um, and maybe going to other centres. You know, I've gone across disciplines. I've gone into different departments, but mostly just, you know, Ireland, Dublin, bits and pieces. But to go out beyond that, um, is great the fact that your skills are transferable you know and it's not just in academia i sat down with my brother recently um he did computer science and we figured out that basically we do a lot of the same analysis he works for oracle you know and you're just like huh, what and i'm like no i'm a social researcher and he's and i was like you're a computer scientist and then he's like no no i do this and i was oh yeah i was like do you need a hand he's a little bit behind i was like grand we do the same stuff so your skills are transferable you know, so you're never pigeonholed. You don't have to get stuck in something just because, you know, uh, um, you feel, you know, this is what I did, you know, um, and so I, I need to follow this track, like, way down the route. So I talked way too much, lads. So this is my last slide. Um, so what have I learned so far? The wrong terms taught me the most, all right? Messing up my CEO form and ending up in arts, because I did, I really messed up my CEO form. I really, really did. Um, it was like all random stuff. Um, got me into research. Uh, Limerick taught me a lot. That technically was a wrong turn. Really taught me a lot. I, I'm, I'm, I will not be a lecturer. That's the other thing. I will be in academia, but I don't think I'll take up a lecturer post. Um, it just wouldn't be for me. Um, adjusting to other people's schedules medicine and health is absolute nightmare because half the time and one of the things i do love is the fact that i work with clinicians the other thing i do is i work with clinicians who birth babies at three and four o'clock in the morning and are waiting on call and so think that like it's a really great time to catch up on the research at three four or five six o'clock in the morning and initially when i started that post i had email on my phone and the emails were binging all over the place i was like fya 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 and i was like oh my god and then I felt the need to respond at 4 a.m. in the morning because that's what you do when you're a researcher. It's not a nine-to-five job. You know, you, you're like, you're on call all the time. No, email came off my phone. Um, and so that was an agreement that I made. And so um, to have my personal email, if anything, is urgent. But as I said, like, you deal with life and death, literally, in, on the labour ward. Research, not so much, lads, you know, unless there's a major deadline coming up, you know, I don't need to hear about it. And so I don't respond to emails after 5 p.m. And I don't tend to get them. I do get them, but they don't expect anything until 9 a.m. Um, and so, but that was something I found really, really difficult. Um, but that's, it's just how they work. And you just have to adjust to those schedules and not let yours adjust too much to that. You are a researcher, you know, however we are closer to 95 than, than some clinicians are. Um, finish research started, uh, I have decided, I have somehow managed to up my publication um, since I started in this job, mostly because I really, really like it, and so I like writing about it. But secondly, I've also got the whole email thing down now, where people don't expect responses from me as much. And so if I, finish, if I start writing on a you know, Wednesday, it, I finish writing on a Thursday morning and I don't respond to emails until after that. Um, 
And lastly, people are the best. Like people are absolutely the best. Um, I wouldn't have gotten my job if it wasn't for Jennifer Lutonsky. I wouldn't have gone for it. It was kind of flawed it. Like really, lads, no, not a hope. I didn't see the potential in that post if I had seen, uh, if I had just seen an ad for it. Um, I have had unbelievable mentors and I have a great sponsor at the moment. And it's something that um, I was on a project, a research leader project course thing with Bobby, I'm going to get the name, name wrong of it and, and HR are going to kill me. Um, and they talked about um, mentors, mentees and sponsors. And I know I have a sponsor and I'm aware of who my sponsor is. So that's the person that puts you forward and suggests you and talks well about you around the place. Um, and a mentor, um, Dr. Paul Corkin, who you may be familiar with, he works here in epidemiology and public health. Oh my God, he's amazing. Like Paul is so good and he's so practical. And um, don't show him this video, but if you give him a coffee and like a cream cake and you sit beside him, what you will learn is just unbelievable because he's very practical and he'll tell you, you know, how to communicate with people from different disciplines and how to really sit down and think about what it is that you want and what it is that you need from them. You know, so like, what are the key points that you need to get across? What are the key things that you need to get out of it for it? And what is it that you actually want to do, Sarah? Like, I mean, many times it's like, seriously, like, what do you want to do? You've got way too many ideas and you need to hone that way down. Um, so people really are the best. Like, um, departments, you'll move, you will, um, but you'll bring people with you. Um, and they're the ones that, like, if you maintain those relationships, when something pops up, like you think of someone or they'll think of you and that's what research is and I think we all know that anyway um, but I remember thinking at the very very beginning of my career that it was the people that I met at conferences and yes that is true um, but the thing is the people who are sitting beside you will move too you know and so like maintaining those relationships are great I now have friends who are in Canada and who are in Australia and who are across Europe and you know there are people that I can still pick up the phone to and Skype and they might be in different disciplines yeah they might not be on grants but when I get really really confused with some design or something or some bit of analysis that doesn't make sense and because I'm supposed to be a little bit more senior where I am now I can't ask stupid questions and so they're the people that I can ask the real, you know, kind of like this analysis makes no sense. Or I haven't done this analysis in like three years. So like, do you have a YouTube video that you know you could send on to me? Yeah. Or like you're teaching this, could you send it on? Um, so people, people, people really are the best. And that is, I suppose, they're the two things that I would say, or that's the only thing I would say, people. People and make sure that, you know, in terms of your research, um, yeah, it's hard. Administration is linked to it, which makes it harder. Um, and we struggle with bits of it. But the thing is, like, I mean, it, it's made me a better person. I actually think I'd be a nosy neighbour otherwise. I'm just curious, you know. So it's either be a researcher or like twitchy curtains, you know, kind of watching other people. I'm really interested in why people do what they do. Um, so it's made me a better person because it's, you know, a little bit more productive rather than watching the neighbours across the way. Um, yeah, so any questions?